now. Isn't that lovely? Such a... A clear sound. Such... Control. So... So... Expressive. So clean. Such... Exquisite articulation. So... 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 Middle class. Hello. My name is Agent Toplitsky. And I wrote the piece that you're currently listening to. And I thought it'd be nicer for me to actually talk to you about it rather than hide behind some very boring program note. So the title came about from me talking to my mate Jay about how hard it is to write classical music that sounds working class. And he made the point about how hard it is to make an oboe sound working class. And that got me thinking. Why is it hard to make an oboe sound working class? So this is a piece about that. Now, we all know that instruments are not inherently working, middle, or upper class. But when we think about certain instruments, many of them tend to stick into particular categories due to the way they sound and the main style of music they play. Or how they speak. So, going into why it's particularly hard to make an oboe sound working class, I don't really know why Joe said it in particular. But in going along with this way of speaking idea, let's think of class as being about familiarity. What you're used to seeing and hearing and your comfort with different things due to the different kinds of capital you have. Because if you have more money, you're more likely to have better job security and free time. And seeing as classical music tends to be quite long and take its time to get to the point, it makes sense that it is a bit more familiar with people who have more free time. Now, that isn't to say that working class people don't enjoy classical music, just that it is a bit more familiar with upper middle class culture because of its history of presence with these cultures, and due to them being a bit more... eh, leisurely. What some people might call high culture. So, let's go through all the different instrument families and pick apart their class based on this idea of familiarity in comparison to classical music. Brass is pretty classless in that you get the whole brass band tradition stemming from old mining communities, and you get trumpets and trombones and jazz music. 
strings are eh, pretty classless in that you get violins, violas, and cellos in traditional music. Uh, the double bass being in Jaws, guitars and rock and pop, and harps being in cartoons to represent romantic stuff. Percussion, you get a lot of this in primary schools, and once you've seen and heard one drum, you kind of get the gist whether that's in rock, pop, or dance music. As for keyboards, accordions you get in traditional music again, uh, pianos and basically everything, and organs are in churches, so they can be quite familiar. So we're left with woodwind. Flutes are in traditional music again, clarinets and klezmer and jazz, and saxophones being in pop and jazz. So we're left with oboes and bassoons. Now, the main reason of choosing an oboe rather than a bassoon is that bassoons sound fun, whereas oboes sound... um... not as fun. That isn't to say that oboes aren't fun, just that bassoons sound more fun and jovial. And this is probably because the oboe has the extra responsibility of having to tune the orchestra, which can make it seem a bit strict. So, we have the oboe. Now, there are moments of familiarity with people for the oboe. My favourite is I've Got You Babe by Sonny and Cher. So, all of the music that you've been listening to so far has been based around this. So let's focus the music to just being the oboe part and I've Got You Babe from now on. Now, I've managed to address some of the style question and how to make an oboe sound work in class, but I could do more. So let's move on to accent. Now, an oboe sounds pretty posh. This sounding posh is in both how it speaks and the way in which it speaks. So let's focus first on the sound of the oboe. The main way an oboe sounds posh is because its articulation, the way in which the notes are played, is very prominent, giving it a quality similar to received pronunciation. For those of you that don't know, received pronunciation is a way of speaking that is most familiar on film, TV, and on the news, where they have crisp consonants and lilting vowels. So, we can start to make the oboe sound a little bit more working class by getting rid of these crisp consonants and lilting vowels. Now, there is no such thing as a working class accent, because working classness is not isolated to a single accent. But there are a number of accents that are more familiar with working classness. A couple include Scouse, Liverpudlian, Brummy, Mancunian, and Cockney. So let's see what the oboe can do to try and emulate some of these accents. Let's start with Scouse. Okay, so we have some growls on some of the notes. What about Brummy and Liverpudlian? Okay, so we have some chromatic bends to make it a bit more sing-song. Mancunian is also kind of sing-song, so what could we do for that? Okay, so we have accents on all of the vowels, so in this case the note A. And Cockney, we kind of already covered that by getting rid of the crisp tonguing and replacing it with glottal stops. Basically, not pronouncing T's in the middle of words. Of course, this is a stereotype, but it is sounding a bit more working class now. Turning to the ways of speaking in different places, I can't get the whole variety of words because an oboe can say words. So we could try to copy some of the abbreviations, such as car on the road to car on the road, and ain't meaning is not, by getting rid of all the notes that aren't needed for the harmonic line.
Another element is qualifying what you are going to say because you feel you are talking to somebody who gets where you are coming from and don't need to give the whole background of what it is you're talking about. This being done by saying you know before making a point. So what could we do for that? So I've managed to make an oboe sound working class. But have I really? Because would you know that the oboe is sounding working class if I hadn't talked you through the process of making it working class? Would I need to further emphasize the working class stereotype by having the performer in a tracksuit or a flat cap or gold jewelry or maybe even all three? Do I need the player themselves to be working class in order to make the oboe truly working class because of who is playing it? And if I didn't talk you through what I was doing, would you just think that the oboe sounds a little bit shit? Because even though we know that an oboe isn't classed at all, an oboe just doesn't sound working class. But that doesn't change the fact that some instruments are more familiar with particular social classes in the same way as certain accents and ways of speaking. But what this familiarity does is limit the possibility of thinking that certain instruments and accents can be in different contexts. For example, many working class actors with working class accents end up only doing working class roles, such as cleaners and criminals. And this is even if they can speak and receive pronunciation both for a role and in auditioning for a role. So it's hard to make an oboe sound working class because you're dealing with familiarity. And it's hard to make an oboe sound working class because any attempt to make it working class will make it feel unfamiliar to what is an oboe. So maybe the idea is not to actively make an oboe sound working class, but simply to make you think about why it is hard to make an oboe sound working class. And to question familiarity a bit more. Isn't it lovely? Such a clear sound. So expressive. So clean. So...